a father, three children, a husband. What was your reaction to this? It was devastating news. Um, <clears throat> and I'll elaborate more on this on my radio show today because we don't have the time to do it here. But I I'm just going to say this because I think the time has arrived with what I'm about to say needs to be said. Obviously, you know, you see a professional athlete, somebody that made millions, somebody that was a family man, a husband, a father, gunned down senselessly, um, traffic, traffic accident. The guy that rear ends him is the guy that ends up shooting him. Um, we don't know all the particulars, but we do know it was senseless. We do know it was inexcusable. And as a result, this guy could be charged with second degree murder. He's in jail on a million dollars bond. Uh, and, you know, if convicted, he could face life in prison without the possibility of parole. And by all accounts, based on what we're hearing, he'll deserve it. But what needs to be said is that <clears throat> this has just got to stop. So at some point in time, we have to recognize uh, that we have to collectively come together and do what we all can as citizens of this country to, to encourage folks to stop the violence. Um, and there are people, I want to make this very, very clear, there are, you know, there are white folks being killed by white folks in their community. Uh, but black on black crime um, is almost, if not already, at epidemic proportions. And it's something that needs to be born. That's not to characterize or to negatively say anything about the Black Lives Matter movement or anything like that, because I understand where they're coming from. And again, this ain't the platform to get into all of that. But the reason why I felt the, the need to bring this, this subject up was because I remember Ray Lewis was getting, you know, excoriated by a lot of members in the black community because of what he had to say last week when he posted this video on his Facebook page. And you can debate what you know, how he decided to say it, you know, the sermon-like delivery and presentation that he put forth and, you know, other people brought up, you know, his past and what he was accused of and all of this stuff. You're going after the messenger instead of focusing on the message. And the message is, is that there are an abundance of black folks being killed by black people. Now, that doesn't mean it doesn't happen to other communities, but other communities don't make up 13.2% mm -hmm. of the American population. Right now, we have over 40 million black folks in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. Back in 1954, when, when obviously schools were being desegregated and there was an assault against segregation, there were less black people back then in the country than they are now. And I was speaking to Dr. Harry Edwards last night, Skip, along with an abundance of other people that I reached out to try and help me come to some level of understanding as to what I needed to focus on and what needed to be said. And one of the things that Dr. Edwards, uh, 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 you know, just encouraged me to do was, you know what, this ain't just about what's happening. People are not focusing on why. They're not focusing on the impact of gentrification. They're not focusing on homelessness and joblessness and how you have a collection of individuals in our society that are basically segregated because one would make the argument in today's society, despite the fact that we as a nation have evolved, we're more segregated than we have ever been. And when you've got folks that are segregated and they're, you know, you, you're bunched together and you're in a climate where you know, that obviously is impoverished on far more occasions than we would like to recognize. Ultimately, you've got a bunch of people that feel hopeless. They feel like there are no opportunities. They feel like the world is just, the weight of the world is just bringing them down. They have absolutely nothing to lose, and they are more than willing to bring folks down with them. And when you see a guy like Will Smith, who clearly doesn't appear to have been a victim of that, at least not at this point in his life. And you see an athlete gunned down over road rage, essentially. I'm just going to sit up here on national television and, and I'm not calling out anybody in any kind of negative fashion. But all of these professional athletes with the Twitter accounts and everything, yes, I appreciate the fact that we put out our heartfelt condolences to the Will Smith family, loved ones, and friends. But at the same time, you can have more of an impact on that. Let's try and come together and do everything that we possibly can to neutralize and eradicate this level of violence that seems to be going on no matter where we are. As professional athletes, you have impact. 
you have the power to influence lives, not just with your money, not just with your charitable donations and beyond, but by bringing attention to the problems that really need to have attention brought to it. Again, I'll elaborate further when I have more time, but I just felt the need to say that because when you got a professional athlete that supposedly had escaped all of this and then even he subjected to this while his wife was with him and she got shot in the leg. Thank God his children, I don't know if they were there or not, but they clearly were not harmed. All I'm saying is it just gives the impression that none of us are safe anymore. Yep. And we as a society should want something far, far different than that. I always love to listen to you while you preach, and you are preaching on these issues, because I love your insight and your passion for these issues, and I always learn something when you when you take your platform that you have here, that this show provides you, and you enlighten me about these issues. And I always have to say, preface what I'm about to say, is that I'm obviously not black. So in no way, shape, or form do I try to identify with anything you're talking about. I, I can't relate at all because I can't. But I can step back and I can ask questions here. And Obviously, this was a tragedy of the highest order, but you called it a senseless tragedy. Many people are calling it senseless. Was it senseless? Was it avoidable? I'm just asking the question because you brought up road rage. Is it possible that in this day and age, just no matter the color of the suspect or the deceased, black, white, what, throw out you know, what, any, any colors color. you want, sometimes it's just road rage. And in this day and age, if you dare to get out of your car and go back and berate the man who rammed you from behind, and it was obviously his fault, and, and knocked you into the car ahead of you, is it possible that, especially if you're a former defensive end in the National Football League, and you have size, and you have mass, and you're impressive in your clothes, and you're, you're a little threatening, especially when you get angry, is it possible that color didn't matter in this circumstance, and that, listen, People are driving around with guns. It seems like every other car has got a gun in it, and today it's the wild, wild west all over again. They will use their gun in a heartbeat and end your heartbeat, in a heartbeat. So is it possible it was just pure road rage in this, this circumstance? My response to you is that, of course, it's possible. But the reason why it's an issue that permeates our community, that affects our community so profoundly, is that you have to look at the numbers game. If you, even though white on white crime appears all the time, sure. you make up over 66% mm -hmm. of the population. Yep. Even though Hispanic on Hispanic mm -hmm. crime appears all the time because people, you know, it's your surroundings, it's yeah. your environment. Even though that happens all the time, you make up 17% of the population. When you are a member of the African American community and you're no longer even the dominant minority, okay, and the numbers appear to be dwindling, when the state of Alabama, according to something that I just read, is talking about spending $800 million dollars, on a, a four additional prisons that they're building in the state instead of investing in the community, mm -hmm. giving more money to education, health care, and beyond. When our priorities seem to be skewered to the point where you're looking at a situation and you're thinking about more blacks being incarcerated and Latinos, it's, yep. it's definitely a concern. And one of the things that I remember, Skip, I remember when I heard the story when Obama, our President Obama, mm -hmm. went to, I believe it was Oklahoma, or to visit the prisons to bring attention to, you know, excessive jail sentences mm -hmm. for those being incarcerated. I recall, Skip, if I remember correctly, they talked about how everything changed from a sports perspective. Yep. Len Bias, star at Maryland, mm -hmm. dies in June of 1986, I remember, from a cocaine overdose. Congress panics. Everybody politicizes it. The Reagan administration talks about the war on drugs. And all of a sudden, you have a situation where 100 grams of cocaine mm -hmm. is the equivalent of one gram of crack. Mm -hmm. Crack was considered to be an inner city drug. As a result, 
an abundance of African Americans and folks in the inner city who didn't even happen to be African American were being thrown in prison. And so when that is your priority, mm -hmm. and that's the perception that you're feeding yep. to a nation of people, all of a sudden, the opportunities are going to dwindle. If the opportunities dwindle, mm -hmm. then you're going to have people who feel hopeless. If they feel hopeless and helpless, ultimately, they're going to be frustrated. Okay. Frustration leads to violence. Sure. And then ultimately, it affects black, white, Hispanic, Asian, Jewish, Does. Gentile, yeah. Catholic, mm -hmm. etc. So again, instead of just talking about what, we have to discuss why, yep. because when you discuss why, you can ultimately eradicate it, yep. and then we can all move forward, because the Will Smith death is not indicative of a black problem alone. It's indicative of a societal problem in our country that people like me, you, and mm -hmm. everybody else, especially professional right. athletes, need to be encouraged to speak about it. And rather than people attacking folks for speaking, let's make sure we take their message, even if it's just a little bit, and do something with it to make it better for okay, the rest I of got us. It. That's what, what's going on right now. Okay, just for the record, I think this needs to be pointed out, that sure. reportedly Will Smith had just left a dinner with his former teammate Pierre Thomas yep. and with, An officer, ironically, one of the six, six officers yeah. who had gunned down the father of the suspect who shot Will Smith and his wife, right. Cardell Hayes, That's right. 28 That's years of age, right. and that a federal lawsuit, he, he, uh, Cardell Hayes had had a federal lawsuit, and the city of New Orleans settled it. So did this cop settle it. Several other police officers settled it. It was a sizable settlement mm -hmm. that Cardell Hayes had. And yet the cops are now saying in New Orleans they don't have any info that links the incidents at this time. But, but we need to... But it's know. also important to point out that certainly not encouraging violence against anybody, but your father was gunned down mm -hmm. by police officers. We don't know the particulars. Yeah. You settle out of court. You do. You didn't get in a dispute with a police officer because you had sued New Orleans. You had. It had reached a settlement, but your dispute wasn't with nope. a police officer. It was with an individual you rear-ended, by the way, who was an innocent victim in all of this, mm -hmm. okay? Just like you proclaimed your father to be. Okay. Now, you could connect those dots any you, way you, you want to, yeah, connect, but it's a problem. Yeah. It's a problem. And yeah. we appreciate you using your voice, Stephen A. And our hearts go out to Raquel Smith. They're yes. three beautiful children, all their loved ones, thoughts and prayers with them. More first take after the break.